Welcome here to the On The Radar Hoop Super Six. Matchup features the Jackson Tigers taking on Southeast Elite. A CP25 Southeast Elite, FBC. As uh, CP25 Southeast Elite has gotten off to a good start, eight to nothing advantage. Here early on in the first half with the with the cross court setup uh, that we're filming from. We don't have the best angle of the scoreboard, so bear with us as the game goes on. We'll make sure we uh, run over there and check the scoreboard for any updates we can give you in terms of specific times. FBC cashing in on an extra opportunity, or trying to cash in on an extra opportunity there on the offensive glass. Can't get that three-pointer to go. Jackson Tigers coming the other way, losing the footing. Turnover, layup on the other end. That one scored by number two, that's Tevin Brown. Brown makes it a 10 to nothing ball game. Jackson Tigers still trying to get on the board here. Jumper just outside the elbow. Gets them on, that's number 33, Rotarius Ware. So Ware makes it 10 to two. Look for the Tigers to see that one splash through. That's a wide open look from the corner though. Shot off the mark there by number two, Tevin Brown. Brown got a FBC, CP25 Southeast Elite FBC on the board with the triple uh, earlier in the contest. Couldn't see that last one go. He has the task of guarding the Jackson Tigers big man inside. They take a jumper instead. Rotarius Ware about the mid-range specialty here over the past few plays to provide some much needed, sc needed scoring there for the Jackson Tigers. Take a look there, good job of using the fake. Might have even got touched on the elbow a little bit there, didn't bother the shot. But he splashes that one through. There for the Tigers. So a 10 to four ball game. Good defense by the Tigers, and it's going to be last touch by number 15, Michael Randolph Jr. So the Tigers. Won't say they had new life. They weren't that far behind early on, but took them a second to get going. Rotarius Ware with the mid-range, and scoring has been infectious. There is number 24, Keyshawn Fuzel. Follows up with the bucket of his own to make it 10 to six. CP25 answers back with a deuce, 12 to six. Trying to work a little high low. CP25 had other thoughts as Tevin Brown knocks that one out to try to follow it up with a three. Kicks off the back of the rim. You're the Tigers, you've got a little bit of rhythm going in your favor. Need to minimize those offensive rebounds. You know, give CP25 extra opportunities to score because they can cash in on them. Like you see number one doing there, that's Craig Hall. As Hall pushes the lead to eight points. That'll be a two if it goes. Good fight for the offensive rebound. There by Tyra Smith. The Pedal High School attendee, that uh, was a good work on the boards, but once he put it on the floor, 
You put yourself in a tough position. Smaller players waiting for you to put that ball on the floor so they can pounce on it. They're able to knock it off of his leg there. And so we'll go back over to CP25. They have an eight point advantage, jumped out to a 10 to nothing lead. Prior to a trio of buckets, two of them by Rotarius Ware. And uh, one on the inside by Craig Hall. Craig Hall with the, the last bucket for CP25. Actually, the other bucket for the Tigers uh, was by number 24, Keyshawn Fizel. One solid big man mixed up with another. We've got a baseline of coaches that have come out here for the early morning games. Three-pointer on the way, ice cream. Splashing that one from the outside, that's Cortland Jordan. Jordan makes it nine to 14. That's a two if it goes, a deep two, too strong on the shot, rebound pulled down by Kamayan Williams. Good follow on the offensive glass there. That's Williams, got the defensive rebound on one end. Gets him an offensive board and a tip in there to make it 11 to 14. Three point game just like that after facing a 10 point deficit. Ball being tipped around on the inside. Who's gonna come up with it? Good job of pulling that one away, Leandre Thomas. Awkward position of having to reach back through his legs to hold on to that one. I don't see guys come up with the 50-50 ball too much in that kind of position. He was able to get it, but they'll turn it over. CP25 looking to convert. No sir on the inside, says Fizel. As Thomas will attack and earn a trip to the free throw line. Good denial on the inside after the strong drive. So the Tigers trying to get going. Thomas earning a trip to the free throw line. It was slim pickings early on, but since then, Cortland Jordan and the Tigers have gotten in a little bit of rhythm as he knocks down the triple. Free throw's good. That'll make it 13 to 14, a one point game after that Thomas trip to the free throw line. Lee will have a foul on the screen there. Couldn't see exact, exactly what the official was signaling. But just the visual context of it. Looked like a foul on the screen set there by Caleb Edwards. One point game. Tigers can take the lead here. That's just throwing it up and asking your big man to make a play. And he does. Catching that one in traffic, coming down with it. Mayan Williams. But they answer right back. Does CP25 with a triple. Back and forth we go, tied up at 17 apiece with the Tigers do. Footwork too fancy for his own good as he was looking to get on the good foot there. Uh, was CP25, uh, number six, Bryce Moraine. So tied up at 17 apiece. Three from the top of the key. Too strong off the back of the rim, but the Tigers will get another crack at it. Floater off the window, nice touch. I'll get there by number 23 uh, for the Tigers. Zarkikius Martin. Zarkikius Martin, and that floater off the window makes it a two point lead for the Tigers, trying to add to it. They cannot with the three ball. Craig Hall comes down with the rebound. That last pass intended for Noah Brown. 
Brown loses it off the fingertips. So now the Tigers, if anybody that just joining us, they were down 10 to nothing early on in the game. They cut down that deficit and are taking a two point advantage here in the first half. Three from the corner, splash. His second three of the game, Cortland Jordan. Jordan makes it 22 to 17. Tigers with Uncle Mo on their side now, and CP25 having a tougher time getting buckets. Good save there by the Tigers. Another southpaw jumper coming. That one rolls around, won't go down. CP25 trying to convert defense into offense in a hurry. Good extra pass, three from the corner. Good basketball there. The assist by Tevin Brown, the three-pointer knocked down there by number 11, that's Romeo Crouch. It'll make it a 20 to 22 ball game. Like where we're at in terms of the pace of this game right now, both teams scoring it. Entry pass inside, layups missed. Approaching about the two minute mark. As we see both teams kind of going, we take a look at the replay from a couple possessions ago. It's a good contest, hand and face. But Cortland Jordan had the body language like that one was money as soon as he released it. His second three pointer of the first half. We got a free throw being taken here. And that one's in and out. But then back on the other end, CP25 stalled for a couple minutes, but that's a good look. Pass by Brown, finish by Crouch. Second free throw is good for the Tigers. That'll make it 23 to 20. Shot kicks off the back of the rim. Rebound by Kamayan Williams. Williams has been a solid resource on the boards on both ends. Good energy. Doesn't do too much with the ball. Just runs the floor, rebounds, and finishes with him giving the opportunity to do so. Tevin Brown with the cookies. Wheeling, dealing the easy layup on the inside. So Tevin Brown, he's knocked down a couple jumpers, but not relegated to just the jump shot. Locking up, getting a steal, and converting on the other end to make it a one-point game. Big man helmet and lunch pail work on the inside, and he comes away with the points he was working for. Number 44, Tyrus Smith, as we are under the minute mark here in the first half. CP25 answers back. With the bucket by, I believe that's number 25. No, that's number 24 uh, for CP25. That's Corey Bowen. Bowen makes it 24 to 25. Kick it to the corner. Three pointer no good by Brown running ahead. Here's Thomas. Thomas drops it off. They miss, but they got a good insurance policy on the inside there. Do the Jackson Tigers in number 44. The aforementioned Tyrus Smith. They're trying to turn up things on the defensive end a couple plays ago. That was Tevin uh, Brown with the steal. Nice spin move, silky lay in just moments ago. First free throw is good there for CP25. But then on the other end, it was that Jackson Tigers hustle that kept them in the game even when they had trouble scoring. You see Thomas drop that off. They missed the first layup. But more than enough numbers around the rim to follow up. So the second free throw is good.
Taken inside by Crouch, he'll miss. Tipped around. CB25 still retaining possession. Not for long as Leandre Thomas pulls it away. As Thomas keeps ending up on that same spot, on the floor. Doing a good job of going to the hole, looking for the contact. And giving himself a possibility to go to the free throw line or possibly finish through the contact while maximizing his hang time in the air. And the way he's attacked, he's also drawing a lot of attention uh, that has opened things up for big men on the offensive glasses. They continue to trail the play consistently, not just standing at half court and watching them. And that system has worked for the Tigers here. And one. CP25 has a chance for the three point play the hard way. Uh, after that take by Deontay Buskey. Good call by the official as the defender tried to slide in there. Well, actually, I guess they, guess they caught that on the floor because he, he made that free throw. Oh, no, they got it right. Appears to be some discrepancy as to whether or not they counted the bucket or if the foul was on the floor or not. So yeah, it was a three-point play, count the initial bucket. Coming on the back end and getting it to go was Deontay Buskey. Out of Daphne High School. Here in Daphne, Alabama. Volleyball line three-pointer. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to end the half, young man. That was number 23 uh, for the Tigers. Zarkichius Martin. His second three-pointer of the first half provides the last points that you'll see as you'll see him size that up. Good awareness to know how much time was on the clock. Playing volleyball here at Alatoona High School. We'll be back with more On the Radar Hoops Super 6. Welcome back to the On The Radar Hoop Super 6. We roll into second half action as it is a one-point lead for the Jackson Tigers. 
over CP25, Southeast Elite, FBC. That shot changed on the inside by CP25. Coming the other way, that one kicks off the back of the rim. Bending but trying not to break there on that defensive possession are the Jackson Tigers. They come away with the rebound, pass ahead. Thomas can't get it to go. So both teams' inability to score around the rim to open this second half hasn't been due to a lack of effort. They're attacking the glass, but the defender's just as intense on in bothering shots and making sure you don't get a clean look for a lay-in or a putback if you do happen to get your hands on an offensive rebound. Andre Thomas, short pull up there along the baseline. Can't get the shot to go. Now it's in the hands of Tevin Brown for CP25. He'll hesitate, now explode. And a block. Let's we'll see if it's on the floor or in the act of shooting. It is in the act of shooting. So Tevin Brown, the Fairhope High School attendee. We'll head to the free throw line. It's CP25 Southeast Elite Squad. Primarily a combination of Florida and Alabama ball players. Brown ties the game up at 30 with his first free throw. And gets the second. Get pass over to Thomas, now back up top. Tigers being patient, just surveying the defense. Kickball against the defense, going to go there uh, against Crouch. Drive along the baseline, try to get it inside. Pass goes off the hands of Tyra Smith. Here's CB25 coming the other way, and that's going to be offensive interference. As Craig Hall was attacking the offensive glass, thought that one was coming off the rim, stayed in the cylinder, but by that time he had already committed. Had to touch the rim, not to come down in a bad spot. So that'll negate that possession. And the potential bucket, Thomas. Gets it over to Keyshawn Fizel. Fizel called for the traveling violation. Both teams collapsing with a quickness. Once you get it inside, you're going to have two, three bodies coming at you. High and low. Jumper splash there by CP25 to get the number for you shortly. That is number five. Deontay Buskey. Buskey puts CP25 up by three. Three-point attempt for the Tigers. No good, rebound brought down by Corey Bowen. That layup was left just short there by number 33. Or number 23. 33 is Rotarius where 23 is Arkechius Martin. Young man that ended the first half with a deep three-pointer. Leaves that layup just short. Following up on the other end is Craig Hall. Now that's what he was going for there when he drew that offensive interference call on the last possession. Continuing to attack the glass. Work pays off there to make it a five-point game. Easy 
easy lay-in for Tevin Brown. So that'll prompt the timeout. The Tigers down by seven. Not too phased by it. They started down 10 to nothing in the contest and roared back to actually get a lead. See how they regroup after this timeout. Back from the, the timeout. Let's see how the uh, Jackson Tigers respond. Foul on the play. Tevin Brown going to be called for the reach in. So the Tigers unable to get a bucket right out of the timeout. Just over 11 minutes left to play here in the second half. Tipped around, still not retained by the Tigers. So CP25 gets it back, they'll pull it out and set it up. I said, I'm just setting up this three pointer. Can't get the shot to go. Long rebound bounces out to Leandre Thomas. Thomas converts on the other end. Like how that young man has attacked the other end of the floor here up to this point in the contest. He makes it 32 to 37. You see he's got two defenders that are much further ahead than he is. They're not getting to that point with the same intensity, so he takes advantage of it for the lane. Five point game now. Tigers have to secure these defensive rebounds. Stop doesn't count as a, as a true stop if you're not able to rebound after the missed shot. Captain Obvious point there, but it, it highlights what is going to be a key issue for the Jackson Tigers as they now trail by nine and are trying to uh, claw back the same way they did early on in the game, just down nine points, but can't afford to trade buckets or allow as many opportunities on the offensive glass as they have over the past few possessions. Long rebound, gonna be brought the other way. Of Bryce Moraine on the rebound. Now directing traffic up top. Gives, goes, lays it in. Assist by Tevin Brown. Easy lay-in for Moraine. Now double digits, 11 point contest. Thomas drives and drops it in to Fizel. Fizel will head to the line for the free throws. You like to take advantage of these freebies if you're the Tigers. Fizel makes the first. Pulls the squad to within 10. One. 
Makes both, and now it's a nine-point game. I expect at the minimum at least one more solid run made by the Tigers. Uh, you look at that guard core of Leandre Thomas, Zarkichius Martin, and Rotarius Ware. It was that same nucleus that helped them respond early on to that 10-point deficit. Ware with back-to-back -back jumpers early on in that stretch. And Thomas with his energy pushing the ball. Gonna have to put something together. Plenty of time left, though, as we're just under the nine minute mark, so don't need to panic. They'll try to get it all back. But if you wanna try to disrupt CP25's rhythm, there's Thomas. Stop and pop. Can't get the bounce. Like the decision there, just couldn't get the shot to fall. There have been a few times here uh, where Thomas, even though he's you know gotten the foul call, he sort of over-penetrated a little bit with defenders back there waiting on him. Or the pull-up with a good decision with the defenders choosing to guard the two guys on the wings running with him. Wouldn't fall for him, but they're still just down by nine. Challenge at the rim, that one sails over it. Thomas needs to get out of that corner, and he gets it out of there successfully. Martin on the drive in the lane. Akichi is Martin makes it a seven point game. Initial shot missed, but he draws two defenders away. And coming in and making the play there, that's number three, Noah Brown. Tyrus Smith wants it on the inside. They get it to him. Now out to Thomas. Thomas, a three from the corner. Silky smooth. They're just in front of the bleachers on court two. He makes it a six-point game. Fuck it there by Thomas. Did you see them kick it to the corner? Hand up, but by that point, it's too late. They pull it to within six. Good bucket on the inside there, though, by number 15 for FBC. You see him use that fake. Get Thomas in the air. Time it perfectly to eat the contact. And get the baby bucket inside. A little close range, Jay makes it 39 to 48 there after the three point play. Well, foul called on that play is Tigers thought they had a clean one. Michael Randolph Jr. was fouled. The last three-point play was courtesy of Randolph Jr. DeAndre Thomas is gonna have a seat for the Tigers. Another volleyball line three-point attempt there for Martin. That one in and out. Those shots that he's taking, those aren't flukes. 
blue shot. Knock one down in that deep to end the first half. Not only has he knocked down a few, but from that, uh, that depth, but you can always tell whether a player has a shot in his repertoire by the coach's body language on the sidelines. That one's uh, rebounded and laid in by Bryce Marine. That guy takes that deep of a three, and the coach is cool, calm, and collected, not really worried about it, and that's a, that's a shot that's in that guy's arsenal. You see a clipboard slam or an immediate point to the bench to send somebody to the scores table, and that probably isn't, isn't a shot that guy needs to be taking. But for Martin, very comfortable out there from deep range. They'll need a couple more if they're to close this nine point gap over the next few minutes. In addition to getting stops on the defensive end, gonna come a point where they just have to flat out outscore CP25. So they've been able to turn it on when they've needed to throughout this game. Got up early, let the lead dissipate, got down by a few points, came right back and have been in control really since we started uh, the second half. The free throw by the Tigers makes it an eight point game. Tyrus Smith gets the rebound after knocking down that free throw. Eight point game. Smith is trying to feed that one in to Fizel. Once you get down within a certain radius of the rim, it's tough because he, he wanted to pass up his good look for a better look by getting it to his teammate, but Sometimes it's better to just go ahead and attack the rim there in that kill zone versus trying to squeeze a pass through that ends up getting knocked away or possibly ends up being a turnover. Got to use your discretion inside. But you look on that last play, Jackson Tigers probably have better odds if Tyra Smith just goes ahead and attacks the rim there. Even if he misses, he and Fizel are in a pretty good position to get the offensive board. Score via a tip in or put back. Every possession crucial for him at this point. There you see some of why when they get that kind of depth, they might as well just go up with it as you see Fizel able to finish. And he makes it a six point game, so we'll be back with more. Uh, here from the On the Radar Hoops, Super Six. The Andre Thomas. And the Tigers trying to close this gap. We'll have an update on how much time is left on that clock across the court when we get back. Forty-four to fifty. Jackson Tigers a persistent bunch. There's been times where the momentum hasn't really been there, but they've uh, found a way to to make it through. And put together many runs of their own. Can they complete the current one that they're on and close this six-point gap? That question remains to be answered. We're coming up on three minutes, about three. 30 on the clock and counting. Turnover. CP25 coming the other way with it. I'll swing it out to the corner. CP25 provides a turnover right back.
Pass poked away inside and we'll have a foul. There against uh, Busky. Deep three pointer. Shot off the mark, but the long rebound comes to where Ware gets it inside. Free throw line jumper for Fizel. That's a nice sight for some of the college coaches here along the baseline. You see Fizel's presence on the inside, rebounding the ball. And being a difference maker on the interior, showing he can knock down. That jumper will only help his call. He makes it a four point game. Baseline drive, nice job of slithering down the, the baseline. We're going to have a blocking foul on the play. That was a quick move. It's the difference between really cutting that baseline off and just leaving enough space to where you think the ball handler can't get there. Fizel tried to cut it off. That's a tough call right there. You Ref has a better angle, even though there is no semi-circle there on the inside. Might have felt like the defender was uh, was too far under to earn that call. Take another look at it. Looked like uh, Tyra Smith was able to get there in time. Definitely one of those plays where I like my uh, perspective as a broadcaster or my responsibility or lack thereof as a broadcaster. I don't have to be on the floor making that type of call there during game speed. It can be hard to judge even when you slow it down, let alone having to judge at full speed like the officials do. So a tip of the cap there. Coming up on the two minute mark, a six point game in favor of CP25. Southeast Elite FBC. Fizel gets it, he's doubled. A lot of air under that pass. And it leads to a turnover. Still. And the dunk there by number 11, Romeo Crouch. Coming up on the one minute 30 second mark, it's an eight point contest after that crouch steal and slam. Randolph Jr. can't get that three pointer to go. We'll have a timeout. On the floor, we'll step away and be right back here at the On the Radar Hoops Super 6. is 54 to 46. So we approach the final minute of this one. CP25 taking their time here. No need to really force it. And instead, they're going to force the Tigers to foul. One minute on the dot. Remaining on the clock here in this eight point game. Tigers trying to hurry up and get it to a penalty free throw shooting situation. Look. 
think the official is there confirming the number of fouls they are away from the penalty. They're getting quick fouls in. 57 seconds, so they've gotten a three fouls in in a span of three seconds. They get another one in. They're getting a foul a second in, so making sure not too much time goes off the clock as they try to extend the game, send CP25 to the line, to force them to make free throws. Right here is a prime example on why you give them kudos for fouling with so little time elapsing off the clock is there. They're able to run about seven seconds off by throwing it back to Tevin Brown and allowing him to dribble some time off. So now we'll have a one and one scenario. 49 seconds on the game clock. First free throws missed. Can Martin possibly get a quick three up here? He'll take the shot. Can't get it to go. Rebound there by CP25. And it looks like the Tigers, instead of fouling, are just going to let this, let this one dwindle down. We appreciate you joining us here on SUV TV. We'll have one more broadcast coming from the On the Radar Hoop Super 6. That one will feature Team Legit versus Houston Defenders. That one is scheduled to start at 10.50. Might start a little early, so stay tuned via Twitter. You can follow us at SUV TV. We'll let you know if that starts prior to 10.50 a.m. As for this one, CP25, Southeast Elite FBC taking care of business. Thanks for watching here on SUV TV.